Hi, I'm Zhe, your host of the YCP Youth Channel Podcast weekly here at the Manhattan Neighbor Network based in Harlem. Today's topic is going to be about hope in 2018. Today I have with me Rory Munshine, Tisha, and Saiba. So the conversation for this week, I felt wanted to be something more positive than last week. And also right. because I woke up today and I'm like, Ugh, I can't talk about oppression. I can't <laughs> talk about misery. I can't talk about why I want to live. Why do I want to keep going? So I'm like, let me lie to myself as my social worker would want me to and keep it positive. <laughs> so I'm curious from the girls to, and when I say girls, I mean G-U-R-L-S, girls. <laughs> um... <laughs> Because we're all trying to be inclusive of femmes, trans women, mm. cisgender women. This is an inclusive space. Um, so, yeah, just going around, just like what are... Let's let's start with something that I do in my theater class, and then we'll build up. We do mm-hmm. something called the brag and gags, but keep out the gags because we're doing just brags. So okay. you just talk about one thing that went well for you this week, this past week. So Okay, so this past week... I would say in my psychology class, I I did well in one of my tests, mm-hmm. psychology class. So I was proud of myself about that. I thought yeah. I was not what going did you get? to do well. an A plus. I got yeah. Uh, Nothing less is good. Of course. Okay. <laughs> it was like ninety three, so I was very very happy. And with where myself. do you go to school? I go to Hunter College. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very nice. And that class is really really amazing. It's psychology of women. So. Mm. I thought I was not going to know much of the details, but I did. Cool. Mm -hmm. Tisha? Uh, My credit went up, which is amazing. Oh, credit score? (laughs) Yeah, my credit score. Yeah. (laughs) Based on what do you think? I have a perfect score now. Oh, you have an 800. Yeah, like I turned it up. Amazing. I just started my, I'm like at what, six? 59 i don't yes. know it's like on the border of like good yeah <laughs> okay and then you like work on it yeah. more um yes, same thing. what about you rory um i got invited to go to albany on tuesday with my Ooh. district leaders to go and lobby for planned parenthood what oh, yeah. uh, district are you in i am in assembly district 65 so those are my district leaders and where's that located that's located on the lower east side so like uh carolyn lascow lee berman we're all going to go up there and it's going to be a great trip and right. what is the um, trip to Albany going to be about? It's about like lobbying for women's rights and Planned mm. Parenthood up and um, trying to get more inclusivity, more um, transparency as it regards to women's rights, uh, and, also more health care for women and reproductive rights. That? I'm just really excited to be going up there to Albany and like having the opportunity to work with so many great district leaders right. on this cause. It's something that I really believe in. I feel like our local politicians are doing a really good job of advocating for women's rights, mm. and at least in my area. And I'm just really proud to be associated with them and is invited and like excited to be invited to work with them. So, so I think y'all already know what changed last week. Can anyone guess it? Just say it. What changed for me? Your lipstick color. <laughs> that too. What else changed with my present? My hair. Your nails. My nails. Yes. Presentation. Your eyeliner. Your my uh, eyeliner. Change. Well, that that's didn't change permanently, but um, so yes, after work. When I was in Harlem working on 116 and Lex, I was like, you know what? I want to get my nails done. I want to express myself. Um, and because I'm working, I always love nature colors and I like work in like gardens and stuff. So I did nature colors. Um, yeah. And I told y'all that I was sitting next to this woman who claims to be the sister of Tommy Hilfiger. We're not going to go into controversy about Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> We're going to keep it positive. Right. But I believed her because I didn't see a lot of white ladies in the neighborhood. And I was like, OK, I racist. better believe it. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I, she's just she stands out from the crowd. So I just okay. believed her of like living and being who she claims to be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and like I was actually trying to go for burgundy mm-hmm. and I was, my mom, for my mom's a hairstylist and for like so long, she didn't want to like, she's just scared of any type of change. She always right. wanted me to be a certain way for her and that didn't make me happy. So I was like, you know what? Something this past week, I was like, I felt down. I felt like I was, you know, wanting some excitement. So I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm just yeah. going to color my hair. So I tried doing burgundy and I had the right aid. No, Dwayne Reed girl helped me out. She had great hair and it said black to burgundy, you know, because right. some of them says like, this is only good for brown to right. this. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I believe you. And then it came out to a hint, no, a tint 
sorry, a tint of burgundy. It like all washed okay. out when I, and then someone's like, no, you have black hair. You need to bleach it first. So I was oh. like, okay, I came back the next day. I bought like this platinum blonde hoping, fine, I'm going to be platinum blonde for a little bit and then go. And then it just came out to this Mozilla Firefox color. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? I dig it. I'm going to just do yeah. that. So people tell me it's nice. I like it. I feel like it's the new me. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope to like reinvent myself in 2019. Whole new look. <laughs> um, so yeah. So going around again, now starting on our little hopes about ourselves, maybe let's focus on what are the hopes that you want, that you're going to want to see change in your community or um, hopes that are happening in your community and also state where you come from. Okay, so I'm from Astoria, Queens, New York. Um, in my community, I'm, I'm not really like much like involved in it, but I know it's very diverse already because there's like Greeks there, there's the Russians are there, there's the um, Indians, there's Arabic. It's a whole really great mix and like the food options over there is very mixed as well. So I'm actually very proud of my com uh, community right now because it's been so diverse mm -hmm. and do people get along like do they like many times we talk about diversity and there's an inclusion mm -hmm. people like stick with their groups so do like right. people interact with each other from the other communities I do believe so definitely okay. because uh, my landlord he is actually um, he's He's from Bangladesh and Pakistan as well, and I usually get along with him. And then we have um, Greek people living downstairs on the downstairs apartment. And usually he's very nice, and um, the hospitality with him is very great. And we all get along with each other, and usually it's like, oh, I don't know this neighbor, I don't know that neighbor, or anything like that. Which is very New York as well. Right. When we don't know the neighbors, which I never knew for the I last knew like 10 neighbors. years. <laughs> I s like some right now, actually now to getting to know them. So that was like good. So I'm glad that we were able to communicate with each other better. And so. any hopes you want to see for your community? Hopes, what can I, can I say? Or if it's great as it is, you're very lucky. I mean, Astoria is great. It's mm -hmm. so green. When I was there like last summer, it was like, why is everyone so happy? And it's in New York City. Like, what no, is people yeah. drinking? <laughs> what is people high on? This is like, everyone is so happy and walking their dogs and are like strolling. And I was like, I felt like I was on a drug walking through Astoria, <laughs> especially as I get closer to the park by like the Noguchi Museum. And mm -hmm. it's just like calm. It feels very like California. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just I feel in a different in different environment than typical New York. I think because it has like both aspects of like city life because we do have like many um, options around us. And, and then suburban. And yeah. then it has a suburban way as well where we have the quiet, the trees, yeah. the houses, and things like that. So I feel that's always a good mix. Mm. But hoping that maybe the prices go lower. Mm. The prices are getting way too high now. They're thinking they're Manhattan. Like, no, it's not Manhattan yet. But definitely I think that because they're gentrifying a lot of neighborhoods as well. Mm. So maybe something like that. Mm. I don't know if that's something to be able to stop, but they're trying to make it a more modern community as well. You're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tisha. Um, I'm from the Harlem community, and... I hope that with this gentrification that Harlem maintains its roots. Mm. I think that as like new buildings are coming in, it's great. You don't like the Soha instead of Harlem? I <laughs> do, but if Harlem is Harlem for right. what it was before then, it's not bad. I don't want to say because of course, you know, speaking positive, but I just hope that Harlem still sticks to who Harlem is. I feel like a lot of people in Harlem want to shoot whoever came up with the name Soha. Like, <laughs> it's supposed to be like, like a Soho Harlem, like Soho oh. Harlem, I and like people were like, it, there was such a fight that was like, oh, this is Harlem, you can't come up with my neighborhood, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, these white people, blah 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 blah, yeah, you know. It, it changes. Parts of Manhattan are the parts for a reason. 
Like mm-hmm. Soho is south of Houston for a reason, mm-hmm. and Harlem is Harlem for its reasons as well. Mm-hmm. So when and you, you don't want to lose the cultural landscape. Right. So when you take other pieces of Manhattan and dump it in Harlem, you get a drastic change. Right. But just hope that the people and the atmosphere keeps its like original roots. So would you want to see, say, you were saying a gentrified neighborhood that keeps its culture, like say the prices are crazy, yeah. but like there's still black owned businesses, you'd be fine right. with that? Right, right. Or at least people even supporting, because there's a lot of them, but you don't hear a lot of people supporting them. Right. So at least more support. I don't know how to explain it. Like Harlem is not the same as no, it was years not. ago. But if I don't think it's possible to bring that exact feeling back, but right. I think it's possible to slowly bring certain things back to help remind people that this is still Harlem. Rory and I both live in Lower East Side, and like the gentrification has really taken away the like culture and yeah. the vibe of like all the immigrants that made into a melting right. pot, yeah. and like all these new developers try to like make like a modern Jewish chic or a modern mm-hmm. Chinese chic, and it's like Extel. You, oh my god we could we're gonna keep it positive <laughs> i even if we're upset about it i know we have to lie to ourselves for my social worker uh, okay um <laughs> yours as well um <laughs> so yeah and i'm just like like you put like what one hebrew letter on a fancy new building and mm-hmm. you think that keeps the culture like yeah. it doesn't um but with Harlem, we actually did here at the Youth Channel, we did a short documentary about uh, Sylvia's Place. Yeah. Um, and, like, even that sto- restaurant has been, the prices like, quadrupled. And it's hard for people to come in and commune. And they're really expanding as a business, which I'm really happy for. But I would love to see, I mean, it's not my har- neighborhood to say, but it is my yeah. city to say, like, people could still afford to live there yeah. and still call it home there yeah. and still call it home mm-hmm. sorry i'm talking for everyone <laughs> that's what that's what sucks about being a host so i'll <laughs> shut up and let rory speak so um, hopes for your community because i know you have a lot of issues with gerrymandering and oh, we're not gonna yeah. go too into it i'm not it, going but, to no yeah I, I have a lot of positive things that our Where community you, can do too i mean i talk know talk about what neighborhood you're from again well you just said that i'm from the lower east side yeah, what so district? i'm from assembly district 65 as i mentioned before i'm also from city council district 2 but i'm right next to city council district 1 we were gerrymandered in city council district 2 but i'm cool with that you know carlina rivera is amazing she's like an amazing female role model and as i said before i feel like on the national level we really did not do very well but on the local level we are doing very 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 well um we had sheldon silver you know he was arrested he was uh on trial for all this corruption we have all of these. Um, we have all these uh, different communities. We had all these racial divisions before, but now we elected Yulene Yu, who's managing to bring everybody together, and she's doing an incredible job of that. You know, she made a mobile district office so people that are elderly and people Isn't that she, are like, the disabled. The second Asian state assembly. She's the first. Yeah, she's one of. I believe she's the second Asian assemblywoman, but she's uh, the first. Uh, Asian American person to represent Chinatown, which is pretty mm. cool as well. Oh, wow. Wow. And you know, you're seeing those tensions sort of slowly decrease in that area as a result. Because I know that during the campaign there were a lot of racially fueled um, rhetoric, but now you know you're starting to see people coming together, and it's coming together in amazing ways. Right. I have a lot of hope for us actually. I'm seeing some of the projects that uh, our city council is doing. This week they raised the age of youth homeless shelters, which is pretty amazing too. For LGBT youth, 25, mm-hmm. yeah. And not only LGBT, for youth in general. Yeah, right. Which youth is going to decrease the crowding in homeless shelters. I have a nice. lot of hope. Yeah. I, I mean, there are a lot of things that are going wrong, but I also have a lot of faith in my representatives that they're going to do the right thing. We just elected Brian Kavanaugh. He's really great on uh, women's rights. He's really great on gun control. I don't know. I guess I'm the odd, odd one that's happy in general about these things. But I think, you know, every day that slowly, slowly change happens, and we cannot just expect everything to happen all in one time. No, I want that to happen all in one time. (laughs) You want to? You you can't have that happen. I just want to be in my sleep and wake up and, like, everything's great and beautiful, and, like, I do want to get out of bed now, and I do want to go to school and work. Like, that's, I want one of those mornings. Like, oh, I feel amazing, and this world is, like, (laughs) Not La La Land, but just somewhere like Oz, a beautiful, <laughs> safe Oz. No, that's a bad example. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
But maybe the progression is a little bit better. Well, for me, I, I feel like there's a comfort in having faith in your political representatives. Yeah. For me, um, on the national level, I have absolutely no faith. But on the local <laughs> level, I have faith that they're going to do the right thing. And those are the people that are ultimately in those boardroom meetings. I know that, you know, some of the meetings are open. Some of the meetings are public. That's great. I can go to those. But a lot of the meetings happen behind closed doors. And if I have faith in the people that are negotiating behind closed doors, that they're going to represent me, that they're going to do it the best of their abilities, then I know that things are going to be somewhat okay. They're not going to be mm -hmm. perfect, but right. they're going to be somewhat okay. So before we go on to national, I'm just going to talk about like my hopes for the community. It's funny because... I'm like Rory, I do have a lot of fears and I do a lot of worries because there is a lot of gentrification on Lori's side, um, a lack of services for people who live there their whole lives, you know, Latinos, uh, senior citizens, um, all types of people, you know, there's a lot of LGBT and homeless youth in the area and the neighbor is becoming very, very gentrified, um, but there is, what do they say, um, there's a famous line I wish it wasn't a gender, but it said, um, where no man stands, strive to strive to be the man. So um, basically, if you see something that needs to be done, be the one who do something. So I'm proud to say that I am hopefully going to run for Community Board 3, me nice. and Rory, yeah, as a non-binary person in New York City. And yes, my makeup's going to be on point, <laughs> and I'm going to be myself and express myself. This is my city. I'm not conforming for anybody. And it's part of me feeling like it doesn't matter that I'm young, that us young people also do have a voice, and this is our neighborhoods. And it really does matter to me, and I want to be at the table of like what's being decided on. And my even community board is not even that diverse in terms of race, class, um, age, and I would really bring in a new perspective and a perspective that is often silenced and not heard, especially, you know, people who identify as women, we're minorities, you know, our, all of our backgrounds were often not heard, and I really empower everyone to be able to be able to take some space, even if that's writing an article or writing a poem, because this is your world too. And you deserve to live in a world that makes you feel comfortable and you feel safe and you feel heard. Um, so I hope me and Rory are gonna hopefully, we're, run, we're running for the same community that's board. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if people know what community boards are, but there's <laughs> districts all across New York City where anyone could, at least the age of 18, I believe, yeah. that you can be part of a group that gets to make decisions on um, money allocated for parks, for schools, for upgrading your library. So it's making sure that the community is heard and they have direct contact with their city council members and state representatives. So it's not a bureaucracy over you. It's the community writing things and that's how it always needs to be. And there are a lot of different committees as well, which is really great because you can specialize in different things. And also, this is just a public disclaimer. Even if you don't apply to be on the community board, you can be a public member on mm -hmm. the different committees as well, and you can come in and show up and have your voice heard. It's really yes, amazing. I've actually went to one of my You should apply. Boards. You should. Yeah, it's important. Great. It's great to network. It's a great way for you to have, because then you have someone who's making the decisions for you, and yeah. I think a lot of young people have been disengaged. I think it's partially because of our education system. Our education system doesn't for my experience, I feel like it didn't really motivate me. I know you're very politically driven <laughs> and you have a different perspective, but I feel like my education did not for many years make me motivated of why I should care about politics and things around me. And then yeah. I just realized, wow, I live part of this world. And if I don't take action, things are going to be decided for me. As I see every day, LGBT rights and women's rights and black rights and all these rights are being stripped daily because we're not, we're allowing for someone else to open the door. We're allowing mm -hmm. for someone else to sign the check. We're allowing someone else to do it. So, yes, I'm still worried about the gentrification, but I'm still hoping to voice my opinion. And I do that with my artwork and my performance and my media activism. Mm -hmm. What else am I really hopeful for my community? I'm still, I'm still very happy that the Lower East Side is one of those neighborhoods that keeps its socialist values of all these nonprofits that have really made the Lower East Side what it is mm -hmm. and providing services for all types of people, Henry Street Settlement, Edu Grand Street Settlement, yeah. Education Alliance, mm -hmm. and that's what keeps the humanity and the human touch in this city is these services, and I really hope that as a city and as a world that we could have social responsibility for each other because we all need help to get through the day and many times i see people going in the city just thinking about their ch 
<laughs> paycheck and welfare and just going home and someone might be next to you homeless and then like if you were in that position you would want someone to care for you or help you so I, I, I feel like I'm hopeful not to be arrogant that like I at least have those values that I want to be able to be a healer for someone else now going transitioning into our conversation about our nation Okay. A lot of things are going on in our nation. We only got a few more minutes left, but maybe you could give us what you hope to see change in our nation. Mm. And yeah. Okay. So and a message for our young people of what they could do. Recently, actually in my psychology class, we talked about how women and men were kind of have like different gender abilities. So and she said that recently it has been changing because she said that, okay, for example, SATs. So the SATs, um, peop both men and women take it just to see how well they do in college. Now, that's the only reason the SAT ever exists. And the math section has absolutely nothing to do in actual universities and colleges. So she was saying that usually women score lower in the math section of SATs and men score higher. But in reality, when they actually go to college and they graduate and such and such, women do s succeed better than men. 60% so, of our colleges is women now. Yeah. Exactly. So w what's the SATs really for? Mm. So I think the SATs are completely useless. And I so think, get rid of the SATs. Yes. But we should <laughs> start getting rid of them. I uh, believe with you. There are a lot okay. of schools that don't take SATs them anymore. SATs have mm -hmm. also been made to originally designed to try to prove, even though it can't, to exactly. like that black people are not capable, that Jews are not capable, that all types of people. And it's it still has that history mm -hmm. of oppression. And it really does not assess someone's intelligence and capability you know, exactly. as someone who has a disability and not having the accommodations for the test. I scored what was considered poor, yeah. but in college, you, you know, did. I had a 3.5. Exactly. You know, so the test, the standardized test is not a way of evaluating people. So I'm, I'm happy yes. with that. I would like Get that. rid of the SATs. Burn them. <laughs> <laughs> also the SAT2s and the APs. Or like even just put actual material that's we're actually gonna learn in college. Right. That would yes. make a little more Life sense. Life skills, like how to spend your food stamps properly. <laughs> you know, girl, girl, mm -hmm. sis. Come um, on, girl, Tisha. <laughs> nationally, girl. I feel like this country is scared of everything. Like everyone is scared all the time. Like everyone is always worried, and in a way, it's like if there's a way to eliminate that worry this country would work so much better together. Mm -hmm. Like people are scared of their living, if they're gonna get deported, how they're gonna eat, where they're gonna sleep. Mm. Are people gonna accept them? Can I get a job here? Can I live here? It's like everything that makes you live is what people are scared about. Mm. Right. So every aspect of your life, you're scared. Mm -hmm. Like some people are scared and they wanna move, but you don't know if you can make a living if you move. And mm -hmm. how can we build that hope? I think there's ways that people could come together to talk about what they're yeah. scared about to build ways to work against the fear. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's so, great. I really love yes. that. Because I think about it all the time. Like In New York, a lot of people are scared to live in New York oh. because it's, scared. it's too expensive. But then you're scared to move because you feel like you're not going to survive. Right. So It's like to take the chance, to take the, the step yeah. to go and, you know, Better take the yourself. risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. take and it's it. scary because you can take the risk and sink or you can take the risk and succeed, but you never know exactly. if you're scared. And what about you, Rory? Um, I know that el like a lot of things nationally are kind of sort of a mess. I lived abroad for most of the Trump presidency thus far. I lived in London. So I guess I saw things from a different vantage point living abroad where people weren't as afraid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I knew that a lot of these social services were being, you know, repealed or in the process of being repealed while I was there, but I didn't really understand the impact until, you know, I got here. I knew that ICE agents were coming in our area and, you know, trying to get people deported and that's very scary as you mentioned but I also do have a lot of hope because I was studying human rights when I was living abroad in an LSE and I was talking to my professor because I did have a lot of anxiety about coming back to the United States and he was telling me that a lot of human rights a lot of our modern day human rights are what's rooted in suffering and failure and that we shouldn't be at that point but a lot of the times suffering and being in situations that are just not very positive inspires us to see what we need to change like for example President Trump, but he managed to get 
a lot more Muslims to register to vote than ever before. He managed to get a lot more Hispanics to register to vote than ever before. You know, you're seeing what's going on after the Parkland shooting, and you see those kids starting to become more civically engaged. Yes. These are opportunities for engagement, right. and I feel that people are finally taking those opportunities to be more engaged. And that's an amazing thing. You know, these are people that didn't think that they had power. The, before that shooting, those kids didn't know what they wanted to do. Now they've made that their life's mission. And that's amazing. And politicians are listening to them. Mm -hmm. President Trump, you know, he, he was listening to them. He had to address them. And I feel that that's something we should all do. We should all try and find our voices here. Yes. Because it's not about what the politicians are, regardless of whether or not you trust them. As I mentioned before, I have faith in my politicians locally, and I do trust them. But if you don't trust them, that's even more of a reason for you to get involved. And I feel that that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. Yes. Thank you. Definitely. That was so beautifully was... said. Um, for me... <laughs> How can I be awful? <laughs> this country's crazy. <laughs> That's why I'm here in Harlem trying to be protected and saved by my girls. <laughs> um, for me, what always has really helped me is, I said me a lot, um, is art. It really has kept me, I love that line from Empire, even though I don't watch the show, that music saved my life and like art really saved my life and I've really not only channeled my oppression and my experiences through my art, but I've also been blessed to be featured in like magazines, articles, museums, all about being who I am. And I have my history of feeling marginalized and different. And now creating an amazing platform and even having this podcast and doing a talk show here all by being myself. And I would really love to, I think my dream is to be able to become an art teacher or to teach art in a way where people can be themselves yes. and also to heal. Because as you were saying, I really feel that art is a beautiful way to improve our education, mm -hmm. to heal people, mm -hmm. for kids to understand who they are and to express themselves and to come together. And art is also so radical and powerful and the movements and change. Like here in Harlem, for example, 30 years ago, a dance movement and a ball mm -hmm. culture yeah. called Vogue is now an international <laughs> movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides the point that like people don't recognize that LGBT people of color like created it, yeah. Yeah. but still, it's such a powerful movement that inspired artists and drag queens and yeah. TV shows and dance competitions and brought people together. And like Rory said, it is very true that a lot of people are taking action, stepping up. That's also kind of why I felt that I want to be a part of community board. Rory's going to be part of community board. We're going to take over the city. <laughs> um, but I really, I really, I don't know, because I also feel like there's a lot of systems in place that need to be changed. That even if people step up to the plate, I know there's some people who would like to believe to change within the system and some people change without. I'm kind of in the middle because I live in the system, but at the same time I want to do without. So I do, I continue with my art and I continue with my voice and I continue being myself, even if that's a challenge. And I really hope that that um, creates change and hope. And um, it's funny. It's the final thing I'm going to say is that, you know how sometimes you see like articles of all the bad things happening and then you're like, oh, there's someone who has a nonprofit that's tackling this issue. But yeah. the positive doesn't keep you strong and hopeful as much. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we are going through a social awakening now that you see now like activists all over the world fighting for different issues, LGBT, women's rights, abortion, immigration, food injustice, whatever it is, mm -hmm. like people are doing something, but I think we need to do, as you were saying beautifully, something together. Yeah. I think we need to separate our differences, mm -hmm. acknowledge them, they're beautiful, yes. but also to take responsibility for each other because we live in the same world, so your issues are my issues. Mm -hmm. And if I don't care for your issues, yes. it will affect my issues. And we, diversity is beautiful. You know, if we only had one color in the Crayola box, it wouldn't be fun. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be beautiful. Yeah. It wouldn't be, diversity is beautiful. And people tend to forget that. Like, we come in all shapes, colors, sizes, races, backgrounds, languages, ethnicities. And that's what makes the world rich. And we need to keep that and preserve that. But we also need to be inclusive and aware of each other. We can't just be like, oh, well, if you are not going to fight for my community, I'm not going to yeah. fight for yours or only care about my issues because... I am X, Y, and Z, but I won't care about yours. No, that, that's like childish behavior. And I think being able to grow up in New York City and being around all types of people, I'm like, I've been helped by so many different yes. types of people that I, 
I really built myself to who I am because it was built by different types of people. And that's what I hope that America can move forward to, that we can move to a nation of diverse people rather than a one specific group empowering. Um, and with that being said, because I'm having a little heartburn and I need to get some Pepto-Bismol, <laughs> but I'm your host. Thank you for listening. Thank you, our audiences. Please tune in for further more episodes here at the Youth Channel. I'm your host, JJ Daniels, with your beautiful girls. Oh. Wave girls. Oh. girls. And stay beautiful, stay hopeful, and stay fabulous. Thank you.